They gonna be like, damn, that's hot. How do you feel about um, some of the recent comments from Mr. Flex made about Tupac um, shooting himself um, when being robbed in New York? Um, I mean, I heard the story, and that's the same thing I heard. You know, that Pac shot himself. I mean, I mean, as long as he wasn't dis discrediting Pac, I mean, radio's job is, is to deliver news, and let radio's job is um, to cause controversy. You know, fa f you know, fa I truly believe, you know, uh, Funk Master Flex didn't mean anything, you know, malicious by it. I think he was just telling the story, and he just caused a controversy. And I think the fact that we forget that, you know, we're in a uh, we're in a world where you have to hype up things before they come. You know, when 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 Drake drops the album, they start playing his last album. They start filtering songs. They start prepping that new album. And right now that Pac has a movie coming out, you know, which is a movie about him, I think people are just starting to filter things out and they're starting to prep that rollout of that movie. So I, I believe it's a campaign situation where it's just trying to help the movie, trying to help Pac keep him alive. I mean, 20 some years later, Pac is still here, you know? And, and the family actually said um, they're not going to be supporting the movie. Um, how, how do you feel about that? You think Honestly, um, when I did the Jam Master J movie, there was controversy too. You know, the family was supporting it and this and this and that. And I actually went and sat down with the family and I gave him a percentage of the movie. I gave his wife everybody a percentage of the movie and I wanted them to know that I wasn't doing the movie. When I initially came to do the movie, they wanted to call it Who Shot Jam Master J? And I was like, wait up, I'm not with that. I'm not here to. I'm not here to see. I, I don't see anything. I don't say anything. You know, that's not my call. That's that's for whoever his family, his friends, whoever to go determine what what happened. I'm here to talk about his legacy. They said, what, what do you want to call this movie? I said, you know what? Let's do some interviews. Let's get let's get authentic, and let's get in the real, you know, the real story of what happened. And we interviewed some of his friends, his closest friends, and the story was how did they get into music? And the story was there was a pawn shop in Hollis, Queens, and they turned some stuff in, they pawned some stuff at the pawn shop, and uh, something happened, there was a uh, disagreement. And uh, they couldn't get their, their money, whatever they, they did from the, from the pawn shop, so they came in at night, threw a rock through the window, and grabbed what they can from the, from, from the, uh, from the front of the store, the, you know, the displays, and it was two turntables and a microphone, that's what they grabbed. And that's why I called it two turntables and a microphone. The life and death of Master, Jam Master J. Two turntables and a microphone. The life and death of Jam Master J. Because that's where he started, you know. And I want to talk about his legacy, not who shot him, what he did for hip hop, how he was part of the first group to ever be in a cover of Rolling Stone magazines, the first group to go to Japan and tour, the first black group to sell a million records, the first black group to um, go on, you know, TV shows and do live TV shows. You know, when there was still a lot of, you know, you know, prejudice in the world and a lot of a lot of controversy between blacks and whites and different stuff, they were the first group to actually do cross reference with like, you know, a white group, you know, rappers, artists, MCs. Yo, it's your boy Molly Ma. You're right here live on That's Hot. They gonna be like, damn, that's hot.